there are two major things that DNA does. One of them is protein synthesis, which is just making your regular proteins. And the other one is probably much more important, which is passing on genetic material or heredity. Now, it does this by a semi-conservative replication, which involves the parent, which is right here, forming two daughter identical pieces of DNA. And if they weren't identical, then it wouldn't be able to produce the proteins and divide. Now, semi-conservative replication happens right before cells divide because cells have to pass on their genetic material so that a new cell can perform the functions of the old cell. Now, a scenario which would happen if DNA replication doesn't occur is if we had our parent DNA and it just kept on getting chopped up and chopped up and chopped up and it kept getting smaller and smaller which would leave well pieces of DNA so one cell would just have one chromosome so this replication process must be precise because if these aren't identical then the cell could have a mutation and cannot produce the correct amount of proteins and lots of other bad things can happen now we do have nucleotides which look like this, which have a phosphate, your five ring sugar, and a nitrogenous base. And these nitrogenous base can come in five forms, but only four of them in DNA. The first one being thymine, which is only in DNA, and the second one can be guanine, and the C, and the next one is cytosine, which, and then the last one is adenine. And these are all found in DNA, and they all have complementary base pairs with the AT going together and the GC going together. Except in mRNA, the T gets replaced and left out and gets put with a U. Which so, DNA replication starts out with this little guy. This little guy. DNA healing case. The goal of this molecule is to unwind and unzip the DNA molecule so that you have this little fork, which we can uh, add, to, which we can create uh, new strands of DNA from. So that's the goal of this molecule, but it has a friend. DNA gly glyrose. The goal of this molecule is to decrease the tension of the DNA strand and I'll help the um, hero case to perform its job. So with the two of these working together we have this fork which will allow us which allows for DNA oh which allows for the these little guys the single stranded binding proteins to to go in here and prevent the hydrogen bonds from reforming. So with the so with the stage set, we can now start copying. First, DNA pri primase is an enzyme that lays the base, which allows for D DNA polymerase three to uh, uh, to uh, form. So first the DNA primase sets down this RNA primer. This RNA primer will be the base which upon the DNA polymerase 3 will build upon. So now the DNA polymer, since we have the RNA primer, the DNA polymerase will start and, cop and start to copy and add these complementary DNA strands to the leading strand. So now we have an RNA primer that is connected towards these complementary DNA. And now it goes, we go to the following strand. So for the lagging strand, it's going to be a little bit of a different process than the leading strand. And that's because you start off with that five prime to three prime direction. So it'll start off the same. Um, DNA primus is going to come in 
and put these complementary RNA bases, and it's going to put down the primer so that the DNA polymerase 3 has a signal of where to start. The DNA polymerase can only add to pre-existing nucleotides. So the DNA polymerase comes in, um, and it'll add the uh, nu nucleotides. It has to do it in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, which is this way. So it'll add the nucleotides, and now you have the complementary uh, DNA and the RNA primer. But since this is continuously opening, it has to do this in fragments. So the same thing happens up here. Where is the other complementary DNA? Oh, here. So the same thing happens up here, and now you're left with uh, RNA and DNA. Um, and the job of DNA polymerase 1 is to come in, remove the RNA primer, and just leave us with the DNA. So now you have DNA, but these two still aren't connected. So DNA ligase, another enzyme, and all of these have been enzymes. Um, DNA ligase comes in and joins those two. Um, and now we have one continuous strand of DNA on both sides. And the DNA ligase does the same thing for the top. Um, DNA polymerase also removes the primer for the leading strand. DNA ligase will do the same thing of connecting those two. The, the main difference here is that this was discontinuous um, adding because it has to move in that 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Here it can just move continuously and as it unzips it can just continuously move. Whereas here it can only go like that so it'll open more and then it'll have to do more and more and more and those are called Okazaki fragments. So um, in the end this is, you're going to get the same result on both sides, but it'll be uh, discontinuous versus continuous. That's it. No, which is around here. To the third carbon molecule, which is, as day before, around... Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, it's, so it's actually going to be easier if you use this problem.